Welcome to the session on writing up. In this session, we will discuss what the research proposal is and a link with your dissertation. We will also look at samples of research proposals. And finally, we will discuss to some length the issue of plagiarism. I really want you to get this right. I don't want any accidental plagiarism to take place. So I'm determined to make you really see what we mean by plagiarism. But first, let's discuss what the research proposal is. It is the most creative thing you will have been asked to produce in your degree as yet. The research proposal is basically a concise summary of your proposed research. Allegedly, towards your dissertation. But remember, you don't necessarily have to have the same research topic, the same research aim and objectives. You can do something entirely different in your dissertation, but you don't have to. You could just continue the research proposed through your research proposal. Okay, back to talking about research proposal. I said it's worth doing well because it is the most engaging, most creative part of your degree so far. The truly most creative part will be your dissertation later on, but until now it is your research proposal. It is also worth engaging with properly because um, there are transferable skills in that process. Later on you will probably be asked to produce a business um, Later on, you'll probably be asked to produce a business proposal or a um, bidding, a funding proposal, um, or to bid for a project when your company will wish to get a new client. The process through which you will be preparing all those is not too dissimilar from writing up a research proposal. So it is truly transferable, truly useful for your life post-graduation. In terms of using it for assessment purposes, you need to remember two things, that structure is important and that content is important. They are both equally important. So let's go and discuss the structure of your research proposal. I have um, contrasted the research proposal structure with that of your dissertation. If you choose to do an academic dissertation. If you choose to do another type of project, then this comparison is out of the window. But the research proposal structure is somewhat similar to the structure of, a, of an academic dissertation. So they both have an introduction. The research proposal has a separate section on the research aim and objectives doesn't necessarily have to be the case, but I highly recommend it. Whereas in your dissertation, the research aim and objectives would fall under uh, introduction. Literature review, they both have a section on literature review. It's just that in the dissertation is longer, that's all. Methodology, they both have this section on. The difference is that in your dissertation, you will also have a longer section on uh, data analysis than you would in your research proposal. In your research proposal, the, the section on data analysis will be quite short. It's a, it's a prospective potential data analysis, um, but you can change that. Your research proposal does not have findings nor conclusions. What would you conclude on? You haven't done the research. Um, and there are no findings to report. So those two sections will not be in your research proposal. What will be in your research proposal and not in your dissertation is a section on timetable. Now, timetabling as such will not count too much towards your mark. However, uh, it will if it seems to suggest that the student um, hasn't really had um, a thought uh, of a feasible plan to carry on their research. But in my experience, students are quite good at planning. So the timetable should be easy. You could even start um, by drafting that. Now, specific to the research proposal structure, this is what the structure should look like. The introduction should present the background of the problem. Aim and objectives, remember the ABC rule? 
I will have to comply with that rule. So it will have to be an A element, a B element, both abstract, and the C element that narrows the topic down. Okay, and the C element will be applied, a context, an actual industry or an actual organization or a country or a, a culture of some sort, but it will be applied. Then following from the research aim, three to five research objectives deriving from the research aim. Then the literature review will present the seminal as well as recent findings on your topic and will identify gaps in knowledge. This is very, very important. Um, as it is the fact that it should be critical, so you should show some engagement with that literature. Your methodology should follow all the layers uh, in the Saunders Onion, Research Onion. So you should speak about research philosophy, approach, nature, strategy, so on and so forth. So just make sure you go through all those layers. And finally, the timetable, uh, which we've discussed about previously. In terms of, if you wish, marking criteria, I think that is um, well summarized in this slide. So you will be marked, assessed on how well you formulate a research aim and objectives. Remember, that's the object of your tutorial one. On how you review existing research on your chosen subject. You didn't have a tutorial on it because really we cannot teach you how to read and summarize that information. You will have to do this independently. Um, and how well you can justify a choice of research methods. The word justify is key because the justification means that you don't have to, that you shouldn't only discuss your research methods, but you should integrate that discussion in, in a wider one on the research methodology. So again, remember the Saunders um, onion. And just, just some questions to guide you in um, preparing your research proposal. Uh, if you wish a checklist um, that uh, signals quality, if your answers to all of these questions are um, satisfactory. Now, allow me to show you um, what I consider to be a good research proposal. The only caution really is that this research proposal is not based on secondary data. Basically, we can only show you research proposals uh, where we have the um, explicit approval of the writer to show it. In other words, we don't have a wide choice of research proposals to show you. In this case, the, the two very good research proposals I can show you are both based on primary data. So you will have to replace that in your mind with secondary data. This sample research proposal is on the influence of culture on impulse buying behavior. The influence of culture, A, on impulse buying behavior, B, evidence from Romania and the UK, C. Okay, so the context is applied. It starts with some introduction about just suggesting why this is worth studying. Um, then it goes into aim and objectives, nice and clearly signposted. Again, to advance an understanding on the influence of culture on impulse buying of A on B in the context of C. Okay, and the research objectives follow. The first research objective then um, says something about uh, B, so spontaneous purchase, impulse buying behavior. Then the second research objective says something about A, influence of culture, national culture. Research objective three says something about C, and in relationship with B. And the fourth one, the national levels, um, again, something about C, but applied by way of recommendations. Literature review, um, just um, quite well formulated. All these um, connecting words um, are very important. Another variable is 
um, current literature has identified various factors. Some say that whereas uh, similarly, however, one example of this is they argue that all these show engagement with the literature, so show that this is a critical literature review, okay? And the literature um, ends with gap in literature. It's something there, but um, another way in which one can emphasize the gap in, in literature is through hypotheses. So these hypotheses have not been tested before. This is the implication of having hypotheses at the end of a literature review. But remember, this only works with a positivistic, um, deductive research design. Methodology, research strategy, data collection, so positivist philosophy, as opposed to interpretativism, it's quite nice that the student demonstrates she or he has knowledge of both and then justifies the choice of one. Okay, explanatory questionnaires, um, framework for data analysis, so as you see, quite a short account of that. Um, projected limitations, potential problems um, is also an important part. Um, of the proposal and indeed of, of any um, any exercise of creative writing in a scientific sense. Then finally time chart, just exemplifying how long it may take to complete the different areas of the proposal. Now this proposal along with a few others, another one marked um, A2, another one marked B, and two marked E are available for you on Moodle just after this video. What I would like you to do is just look at these uh, criteria, the A, B, C again. I quite like this triad of A, B, C as you can tell. Um, so just look at these criteria, look at the sample proposals, and then try to mark the um, wildcard proposal, let's say and then report on your mark and a short feedback 